In California, there may be no easier place to buy weed than Los Angeles. With more than a thousand pot dispensaries, the city of angels has a devilish side. I came here because after seeing how marijuana is grown and turned into edible treats, I wanted to know more about how it's bought and sold. I've never been in a pot store ever, and I'm, I'm honestly a little nervous. Why? I don't know if I want anybody to see me going in. Look, I don't judge people for using marijuana. That's personal preference. But at the end of this journey, what I want to decide is, do I want my money in here? And more importantly, is it a good investment for other people? Is there really an investment opportunity here? Or is it all a big risk? I chose a dispensary on Santa Monica Boulevard, a place called MedMen. How are you? Good morning. I'm Marcus. Adam. Nice to meet you. Welcome to MedMen West Hollywood. Adam Bierman is MedMen's co-founder and CEO. Do I call it a pot store or a marijuana store? You can call everyone. I call it the future. Wow, oh, this place is cool. It was definitely not what I expected. MedMen was open, airy, and modern. Nothing seedy about it. There's no bars on the windows. There's no guy with a gun at the front. You're right. walking in, we're open to the community. I like the design. There were iPads everywhere, loaded with information, right next to gizmos that let you see and smell before you buy. This allows uh, the consumer to actually see it through a magnifying glass, to smell it through a little door that slides open there. Um, this door right here? Yeah, so you would actually stick your nose in there. I caught a whiff of MedMen's strategy. More style, less stigma. Was it just window dressing, or would it entice customers to actually pay more? Have you ever been in a cannabis store before? I have, but not one as nice as this. <laughs> what do you think of it? It's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. Crystal Jane says she started really using medical this. marijuana three yeah. years ago. This is my dog, by the way. Oh, hey, dog. <laughs> How are you? Would you expect the pricing in here to be higher or lower based on the environment? Based on the environment, I would say this is like a very high class kind of joint. <laughs> so how much do you normally buy? Yeah. Just to get a comparison. Yeah, maybe, I think that the, the term is called like an eighth. An eighth? Yeah. Okay, what would you normally pay for an eighth? Like 40 bucks. 40, okay. How much is an eighth here on average? 65. Okay, so it's nicer. Yeah. Higher quality. Okay. I guess that window dressing so works. Door, so this renovation was complete about nine months ago. In those nine months, we have doubled our average uh, customer count on a daily basis. Up to 180 people a day are walking through this store right now. The MedMen formula is adding up. Bierman says those 180 customers spend an average of $85 each per visit, meaning this one store pulls in more than 15,000 each day. How many locations do you have? So there's five in Southern California, four in New York. Uh, they look just like this. So they all will ultimately all look like this. But there's more to MedMen than just a pretty face. It has its own capital fund. They've already raised $60 million from investors, and they're looking for more. Think of us as the Four Seasons. Okay. Um, and imagine if the Four Seasons had a private equity arm that also bought hotels. And then converted them. And then signed a management contract with the Four Seasons to run them. So our private equity firm will essentially go out and buy something like this. Okay. And then turn around and sign a management contract with our management company. Who would have thought a pot company would be that complex? This is the new world of cannabis in California. So if I get a license, I should call you? You should. When it comes to its bottom line, MedMen has another big idea. Cut out the middleman. How are you? I'm Marcus. Marcus, I'm Damian Solomon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you do here? I'm the director of cultivation for MedMen. Dispensaries usually pay from $1,500 to $3,000 a pound to outside suppliers. But MedMen can grow its own for under $1,000 a pound. Do I need to get dressed like yes, you? Yes, we have stuff here ready for you. And it's just part of our quality assurance and quality yeah, yeah. control. These are the different strains. So you can see there's, there's a strain sour banana. Uh, green Crack, Tangy Dream, Euthanasia. Yeah, that one's probably pretty mild. <laughs> it's a balancing act, I mean, cultivating no strains and it catering is. to it customers. Is. How do you measure demand? Being tied to 
uh, retail dispensaries, we're able to then get that data very quickly. We're able to analyze the metrics that we get from the retail side, from the point of sale. Is it uh, that sophisticated? It, it's getting that sophisticated, yes. I'm gonna get the feedback from the consumer. It says, I really want this taste, I really want this flavor. And therefore, we have to then change our production cycles to meet the market needs. This is just like any other business. I had one final question for Adam. If pot is so lucrative, why isn't the big money investing? How many traditional private equity firms would love to be in this space, but can't stomach the repercussions of getting in the space? Most of them. And why is that? Because their hands are tied, because they're running legacy funds that have vice clauses uh, in their fund that disallow them from doing it. Because pot is still illegal under federal law, Big Pharma, tobacco, and other giants they're sitting on the sidelines for now. You don't have many people competing. It's the most inefficient market of our lifetime. Because people see the risk of the federal government not really allowing it and wondering if they're going to flip-flop. I welcome the perception of that risk because it allows me to run as far and as fast as I can. I thought Adam was a very smart guy, very sophisticated. He understands his business. I would have never imagined that the retailing of marijuana would ever be this slick, this well merchandised, and this lucrative. Prior to going into the store, I would have never contemplated investing in this concept. But after seeing the frozen goods, the beverages, the consumables, this is a real business. A real business with a real retail footprint. You may not like it morally, but you definitely have to pay attention to it. Up next, chasing their dream, one edible at a time. If this doesn't work, you've lost the money, yeah. and you have no income. Right. <laughs> Best friends Cindy Pinzone and Leani Posad are working around the clock. The duo behind Treat Yourself is preparing to pitch their marijuana-infused tart. The hustle is real, and so is the risk. How much have you put in? Around 15,000. It's pretty much everything you guys everything have. Everything we have, yeah, yeah. If this doesn't work, you've lost the money, yeah. and you have no income. Correct. Well, you better get to work. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did pack some unmedicated okay. in case they want to try. Should That's we bring that? Yeah. yeah, OK. They're leaving their tiny home kitchen for the big city, hoping to sell their tarts to MedMen, the popular dispensary chain in Los Angeles. They're barely breaking even. They need this. Who's excited? We're excited. I'm no pot expert, but I know a good pitch. So I caught up with them outside the store in West Hollywood for one last pep talk. But I wanted to just come for moral support because I understand the stakes that you guys have and how enthusiastic you guys are. Do you feel prepared? Yeah. What did you change about your presentation from before you met me to now? The main thing is to really hone in on letting them know our, one of our main goals is to increase their margins on our products. All right. All right. Kick ass. Let's Thank go. You. High All five. Right. Cindy and Leani are meeting with MedMen's head buyer. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm uh, Josh. Cindy, so nice Cindy. to meet you. Leoni. Nice to meet you. You guys want to uh, come back? And we'll, yeah. Uh... It's a big deal yeah. just to be here. Josh is flooded with as many as 40 pitches every day, but only 3% of those products make it to MedMen's shelves. The way you kick off this pitch? Give him a sample. No pot, of course. He's on the clock. It's delicious. Thank, Thank you. you. You could have blindfolded me. I would have thought this was like some kind of regular Pop-Tart. So far, so stuff. good. One of our main goals for you guys is to create larger margins for you compared to... Margins, you packaging, many. product quality. I like so what I'm hearing, but I ago, saw this one coming. On our packaging, we wrote that, you know, our products are good for menstrual cramps. Sure. Um, I'm sure you read that. Is that going to make some male consumers shy away from it. Yes. Um, no men are going for that. Right. You might be able to find more delicate words. And honestly, I mean, part of it was a shock factor. It's because we, sure. at the time, felt so underrepresented. Like OK, no I know I said I was just here to listen, female issues. but I have and to step in. That's part of your sales pitch? <laughs> that was a shock factor? I mean, it's real. I don't know. It could be on there, talking. just not the first one. I'm not convinced he's buying what they're selling. What are the, what's like the next steps look like? Like where, 
Like, when do you think you're gonna maybe have a few more employees? Um, I would say in the next four weeks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say off the top. Like, I know sitting this on my counter downstairs, mm -hmm. it will draw attention. Yeah. But that's not enough anymore, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of have yeah, to just kind of dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, definitely. For now, it's wait and see. But in my mind, they miss some opportunities. I'd never heard you say, we're already prepared, we know about the regulations, mm -hmm. and we can scale. You didn't really, objection, response, okay. objection, response. Okay. Whether this is the cannabis industry or the cookie business. Right. It shouldn't matter. The business has to They need to keep their eyes on the prize. The $3.4 million that Treat Yourself could generate in a year. That's the possibility if you do an average job and you can produce. Right. You need to keep that number in your mind, okay? Okay, I like it. Deal? Yeah, deal. Okay, I'll we'll see you guys. Good luck. Thank you so much. I left the women from Treat Yourself and headed up to Berkeley.